coming out, which might be even better for Ooh. both for, uh, for both Yoda Cage and Beast. Prolific ed edge guarders. Like, <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. He countered it. How did he see that coming, man? Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Uh, another thing is that this is Pokemon Trainer, also a very dynamic character. And I believe Yoda Cage uh -oh. and Beast are a static team. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, they are a static team, if I'm correct. Uh, many of these uh, um, bleh, PA players oftentimes rotate teams. Doubles is a... Uh, Philadelphia is a huge fan of doubles, so they just experiment with so many different team combinations. So maybe if, if they're not static, they're at the very least familiar. Oh, and we're seeing almost exclusively the Zard right now. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> which I can definitely agree with. This is a fire-type starter battle. Actually, we have three fire types here, including Roy. Yeah, Roy counts. I, I would think so. <laughs> Roy is a fire steel type, of course. Yeah, naturally. He is down a stock, though, immediately from an incredibly early edge guard as 6 a.m. is also dropping stocks to uh, the Yoda cage, getting put in the cage as well. Just holding on to it, trying to hold on to as much momentum as possible, but 6 p.m. again, or excuse me, fume, That's dying who's already. 6 p.m.? <laughs> Evil 6 a.m. be like 6 p.m. <laughs> Oh man, this is, a, this is a, certainly a rough spot though, because while you have all of your prominent doubles stuff that Incineroar gives, what you lose in, is a means of flexibility. You have to set up these team dynamics, and if you're not able to do that, whether it just be familiarity on Beast and Yoda Cage part, or just being able to play so god darn well. <laughs> I will also say that I'm loving the uh, sort of the awareness from Yoda Cage that Bowser Jr. has ways to sort of he has like his uh, his Mega Koopa if it's in hand or the cannon shot. He throws it out exactly when his partner is about to be hit. Okay, <laughs> just everybody falling into the Morton Rapid Jab side to, uh, to kind of react to that. Yeah, uh, wow, this entire doubles dynamic has just been. If you're getting a hit, I'm hitting you for it. This in, this ledge, left ledge a bloodbath. Let's see if. Oh, no stops dropping. 6 a.m. able to uh, to armor straight through the the, um, the clown car eject. Trying to bring this black soul in steady. They are fighting with a uh, with a deficit, but able to bring it back to an even stop count. 6 a.m. surviving at 170, finally getting that grab, but still living the doubles. Living. The doubles damage reduction playing its part well. That's true. <laughs> oh man, that is actually such a big factor. And also, we didn't have time to pummel. You know, in, in, a, in a single setting, maybe you would have time to pummel two to three times, but not the case. In the end, 6am drops the stock soon thereafter, but this is, uh, this is still they're basically up an entire stock. But in the doubles, just the nature of doubles, that can, uh, that kind of doesn't matter. Like right now, if 6am, or rather if, oh my god, he's 6pm. That's his tag, yeah, he's 6pm in the game. The, yeah, that's what I was <laughs> Stupid. Uh, <laughs> Oh, and there drops Yoda Cage after, after holding such a good lead, being able to focus on Beast and force him to take a stock, ended up a uh, putting Beast in a 2v1 situation. A very fresh stock on that, but trying to bully, uh, get out of the way of Roy's combos and the coverage that 6 a.m. is providing means a quick 60. He's going to get up here and he's going to throw out a hitbox. Oh, man. Yeah, this there's is, that up This there. is the sort of thing where right now it's actually looking pretty dicey for Beast, but he just needs that one good hit. A grab at this point. If uh, on the side of the stage might be able to do it or an up smash for sure and this is synergy is going to be so important He's surviving that survival was so key 82% already if they can get him to like a hundred plus even if one of them dies then at the very least it's an even game uh, Going with the forward throw just trying to keep him on ledge seeing what he can do fine looking for the two frame beast That should be it. Yeah Wow, that's fantastic. First of all, and amazing. Bump afterward. Love this yeah, hit. amazing survivability from Fume in hiding. He got hit a couple times there, but his DI was on point. And once again, with the damage reduction, this being doubles, that kept him alive in those crucial situations. Because the 2v1, as soon as Yoda Cage dropped, that was just like really beautiful 2v1 play. Every single time that Beast would get hit, it would turn into 50, 60 plus damage. Yeah, let, let's get a replay on that. <laughs> just Gorgeous. How, how to start a game. How to just vibe check. <laughs> oh. Also the Mecha Koopa. <laughs> Wait, did he countered? He countered on Fume's fair, but then invoned through the 
or is it the hitbox was able to clash with the uh, flare blitz. So he didn't immediately counter the flare blitz, but he did survive the attack. Like, see, so he countered the flare. He's countering fair. I see there. Wow. <laughs> so not as much damage as it could have been, but Incineroar just flexed through an explosion. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> All right, so I honestly am really liking that the teams play from Fuman Hiding and 6AM. They're doing a beautiful job. And the fact that they managed to get that 2v1 situation, uh, I think if we end up getting in a point in this next game where it's kind of close to that, you know what I mean? Uh, it's going to be crucial that we don't end up having, you know, uh, Beast and Yoda Cage dropping first. Wow, he got three. He got two reps on that Whirlpool combo as well. Oh my lord, this is a, an interesting start here for Beast. Just immediately changing up his uh, his strategy. Like, all right, I'm, instead of leading the Charizard, who is extremely good in doubles, I'm instead going to try and lead that Squirtle and poke to my opponent's weaknesses rather than play to the double strength. Which, hey, certainly valid as the Charizard is immediately out uh, right there after, not trying to deal with the Ivysaur and uh, that character being a little bit slower. Because this match is certainly fast paced when Roy is on the field. <laughs> Look at him go. Oh, again, yeah, like you saw Yoda Cage actually tried to go in and help, and he couldn't get there fast enough. Just the fact that Roy, his combo is carry, you know? It's not like some station. Oh, he. Ra Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, right, they're on the same team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, it didn't drop. matter. Yeah, That's actually... Incineroar takes full damage from the counter, right? Uh, half damage. Oh, it's okay. It's half damage. But it's still, like, a non-insignificant chunk. Uh, right. It does power him up, but if he's at very high percent, he might not get the chance to even use it at all. Oh, getting that back throw. Looking for the edge guard on Fume. You gotta have to... Oh, Fume? Fume? What? Oh. How? He killed Yoda Cage with it! <laughs> uh, it's, um, all right. Yeah, fine. No. Cool. <laughs> It's, I, do you think Incineroar knew what happened? Do you think he was just confused? He like goes to the Larry, there's just somebody else there, and he's like, okay. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. Wow, what an incredible statement coming out from Yoda Cage. Just finding a grab on 6 a.m. early on and saying, all right, you're taking full damage from this, and then the next one's going to kill you. And it certainly did as Beast is back on the Squirtle, looking to trade off combos on his own jab on the other side. This is where it looks like Yoda Cage and Beast are at their best, finding the edge guard on uh, on Fume, Fume as well. Is it Fume or is it Fume? I'm not sure. I've been rotating between the two, gonna be honest. I'm gonna call him 6 p.m. It's what he clearly <laughs> wants. This is true. This, this is the this is what the people want. <laughs> finding the down smash on the platform. Oh, that's gonna. All right. Yeah. It, oh, that was high. <gasps> that was with the upbeat too. That was honestly gorgeous. This game is looking like a, I mean, this is completely unlike game one. Just the edge guard started to happen. And after that, the fact that they were down by so much from losing stocks at 60 sub percent, I think. Yeah, there's the, it, you're not gonna be making this comeback in this situation. Oh, the fair missing, but 6 p.m. is, yeah, he's not even able to get off the ledge. Both of these characters, Bowser Jr. in particular, a really good ledge trapper. And that's kind of the role that he is taking. Yeah, this is... I mean, respect on Fume, though, for just... Or 6 p.m. for just being creative off of ledge and moving uh, uh, moving extremely well. It's so really struggling to find some of these closers. But you're up four stocks to one, so it's okay. You can hit your teammate in that kind of spot. Yeah. You know, Bowser Jr. I'm sorry, Morton. Morton, Morton. in... Yeah. <laughs> All Mortons are Morton. You know what I mean? I feel that. All the other, all the other Koopalings, they're just Bowser Jr. <laughs> but Morton is Morton. Morton. Um, <laughs> Morton's but, uh, but Morton anyway. for Morton 2021. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that uh, it's a weird character in doubles. Uh, there are a couple of strengths that we're definitely seeing. For one, that jab, the fact that locks the opponent in place so long means that if the teammate is aware of it, they can go in for extra damage. But also, I, you know, I, that. That I believe so that Mecha Koopa, uh, because Bran was talking about this earlier, it is frame 67 is your first actionable frame. Like, in singles, you might get a chance to pull that off. In doubles, it's going to be real tricky, though. So that's one of his best tools. That's kind of a non-factor. 
What's so interesting about this team, about the Yoda Cajun Beast team dynamic? <laughs> I thought he parried. Am I wrong? I, I saw a parry there. How did he still die? He parried the cart and got blown up by the explosion. It must have. We'll have to see the replay on that one at the start because that's a very early tone setter. And what has been so crucial for Yoda Cajun Beast in games two and three is that they're not letting 6 a.m. to survive until 170. They're killing oh. him so early, so often. The side B is there and is always a threat. But if you're able to mitigate the survivability of Incineroar, then you're taking away so much potential that can come out from this team that has can really blow you up, especially with Rage. At the same time, look at this. This game is even here. That evening up the stock really quickly onto Yoda Cage has basically kept Green Ooh. Team in this. Oh, and what a beautiful stock taken. Right now, we actually have 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, they have a lead, and it's a sizable one here, especially because Yoda Cage being knocked off stage constantly, not really able to help out his teammate Beast once he gets put in the grinder. Yeah, they're really doing a great job of just mitigating the Squirtle and calling out some of the switches that Beast has gone for. They're really understanding the switch cadence and playing off of the uh, desire of Yoda Cajun Beast to want to scrap and want to put each other in, uh, in just hit for hit situations as the back air ends up trading with, with Beast. I'm sorry, the situation where they were basically trying to decide who would let's trap who in that situation. It felt like in an action movie when the two guys have their backs to each other and they're just like shooting outwards. I feel like Green Team is very comfortable right now. Granted, things are not looking like they were in a kind of... Uh, if, if they're not able to kill Beast here, things can actually go really badly really quick, though. Stock counts are even. Beast's holding on as Yoda Cage is putting on basically what is a 2v1 where this Beast is able to hang back and come in for the punish every time one of them overextends. Basically, what are you going to do about Cart, says Yoda Cage, and both of them didn't have an answer for a solid minute as it ends up being 6 p.m. that drops the first stock. Boom, having to... Man, I'm three pronunciations now. <laughs> Oh, and there's the back throw back air. He's looking to get the kill, but great <laughs> fastball. What happened Did in this see? past minute? Uh, I, well, for one, I think that Yoda Cage just cleaned up, and that is dead at 60, sure. Char a damage multiplier? No, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, no, but I, honestly, the, the stock that he got, um, that Yoda Cage got on 6 a.m. at the very end there, I'm not sure if, okay, I uh, but he was going up for this up B, and he just like followed through. He was air dodged, and he was like, I'm just going to keep going for this swing, buddy. He just stayed on top of him. The fact that Incineroar is both a big target and doesn't have the best air speed meant that he couldn't get away even if he wanted to. Look at that. He countered it, and the counter just did not connect He's, at all. This isn't a sweet spot, by the way. I just want to point that out. He's I, not on fire. This man... He, he spawns fire, but he's not currently ignited. That was a sour spot hmm, back air at I, 150. <laughs> I don't believe you. I understand where you're coming from in terms of objectivity, uh, but subjectively, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't feel right in my gut that that was a sour spot back air. Absolute goonery. Love to see this, though, and I really love to see like Yoda Cage clean up his play a little bit, and even if it just ended up being like, oh, they don't know how to deal with these, uh, with the cart, the armor that it gains, the spin out being a kill move, the, the fact that he could just run in with reckless abandon and throw himself out there, kind of shook up 6 a.m. and Fuman hiding for all long enough to make Beast, to allow Beast to reset himself and put himself in position to take stocks and play how Charizard do, does best, which is uh, back airs at 60. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much for tuning in.